Hello, in this brief tutorial I'm going to be using ImageJ software to analyze some confocal micrographs taken of cardiac muscle. So this is ImageJ and I have it loaded on my Mac computer. And this is an image taken staining using the wheat germagglutinin stain using Alexafluor 488 that allows me to visualize the cell membranes of cardiac myocytes. This is also be counterstained with DAPI so I can see the nuclei. If I drag the image to the software, it loads up the image in ImageJ and allows me to freely view the image. ImageJ allows a lot of image manipulation, but for this purpose, I'm just going to use it to do some simple counting and some simple area measurement, allowing it also to calibrate the software to the correct area. So the image has already got a scale bar between 0 and 50 micrometers. And so I want to first calibrate image J to accept this distance as 50 micrometers. The way we do this is in the analyze window, we can set scale. And in the set scale, we can type a known distance in pixels, a known distance in a unit, which in this case will be microns, and then you can enter the unit of length as microns. You can also change this to global, meaning that future images you load within this session will adapt to the same scale. But at the moment, I've not measured this distance. So to measure this distance, I'm going to click on the straight freehand line measurement tool. And if I want to, I can actually zoom in on my scale bar using the zoom window and then draw a line that corresponds to the length of my scale bar. There we are. If I go to the Analyze window and click Measure, it'll tell me how many pixels this is in length. And that's 205 pixels. I can leave the results window on the screen. So now if I zoom back out again, and to zoom out, you press the right mouse button. To zoom in, you can press the left mouse button. So we now know that 205 pixels equals 50 microns. So we go back to the Analyze set scale window. Of course, this is the last measurement I took, so it's automatically entered this number into the set scale window. But I'm going to just take away those decimal places. And I'm going to change the unit of distance to micrometers. And the known distance in this case, it says down here, is 50 micrometers. So it now knows that it's 4.1 pixels per micrometer. I'll click on Global and press OK. So now, just to confirm that this works, I can zoom in on my scale bar, I can go to Analyze and Measure again, and it tells me that the length of my scale bar is 50 microns, 50 units. So we know now that the scale has worked. So I can zoom back out again. So now we have calibrated this image and we know that the scale is correct, I'm going to ask a couple of questions of it. I'm going to ask how many cells there are in the picture, and then I'm going to ask what the cross-sectional area of the cells are. So to count cells, it's very, very easy. This little tool up here, the crosshairs with the little square in the middle of it, is a point tool. If I click on the point tool and click on cells, you can see it puts a little square inside the cell. If I click on another cell, the square disappears from the original cell and appears now in the new cell. This is because the point tool is set up to a single point. If you right click on the tool, which it says underneath, you can choose a multi-point tool. If you double click, you can set some little settings. So for instance here, if I double click on this, I'm going to set this to a, uh, let's say a crosshair. I'm going to change the color to a uh, color we haven't got on the screen. So uh, let's go red. I'm going to make it fairly big and I'm going to label all the points starting with a counter at one. So let's start counting cells. As you can see, as I click on a cell, it puts a crosshair in that cell, counting the cell, and I can continue clicking all over my image until I've counted all of the available cells. I won't waste any more of your time by doing this for the whole image, but you can see very clearly that just by clicking through if you think you've missed one, you can go back. And the final one you click on will be the total number of cells in this image. So if you're calculating cells per high field view or something like that, you can just use this. So that's a very simple way of doing that. 
So let's just say we finished with this image, we finished with the measurement tool, and we're not going to save the measurements. So I can drag this image back on again, and let's just check that the scale has worked. Yep, 4.1 pixels is 1 micron. Because we clicked on global, it saved our settings. So now we want to measure cross-sectional area of these cells. This would involve measuring the walls, so the membranes we have here, these yellow lines, and you can do that with your mouse. Obviously this does require a little bit of mouse skill, uh, and I'm sure you've all practiced using your mice, but um, I'm just going to zoom in for a second on a small area, this area here, and I'm going to center that using the hand tool there we are and I'm going to measure the cross-section area of this little group of cells here of course if you're doing this um, for your research or your experimental purposes you would measure the cross-section area of all the cells so the tool we want to do the cross-sectional area is the freehand selection tool this thing that looks like a little kidney bean lying on its back if you click on the freehand selection tool there is no right click option there is no double click option it is just a tool for drawing and then you start drawing. Because we've previously selected the color of our selection tool using the point tool to red, it's drawing a red line around the cell. So I can see quite clearly that I've drawn a red line. Unfortunately, the default color for these lines is yellow. And in the system that we're using with our confocal microscope, we use the WGA Alexa 488 conjugated stain, which happens to on our confocal come up as yellow. We could of course pseudo color to another color, but we like the look of yellow. So the default color being yellow gets a little bit frustrating to see, but because I've already changed the default color when I change the multipoint tool to red, you can see it's changed to red. However, if you go to the um, options window, which is under the edit menu, and you change the colors, you can see here, we can change the selection to any color you want, but I can leave it at red because I think red's a good color. So we've selected this area, and we now want to measure the area within this selection. So we go to Analyze and Measure, and it's 440 square micrometers. So that's our first cell measured. Now, if I went to start measuring another cell over here, I might lose this cell, I might forget I've measured this cell. So to make life nice and easy for you, if you go up to the Process window, and choose noise, you can add a little fuzzy fill. See this, it's added like a interference fuzzy fill in the cell. So when I start going to the second cell and drawing around the second cell, which I'm doing roughly here, you'll see that the first cell is still filled in fuzzy. The new cell has been drawn around. I can measure the new cell, add some noise, and then move on to the other cells. So by doing the add noise function once you've done the measurement, it means you can actually quite effectively count all the cells in the field of view without doing one twice. The other option is you could select your cell. So here's a little tiny cell here. Ooh, muck that up. Let's do it again. There we go. Here's a little tiny cell. You could fill. So if I go to the process, sorry, the edit and fill it, it would fill it with white. I find that a little bit annoying, it looks a bit difficult on the screen. So I'd recommend when you do it, you don't fill with white, so just measure that small cell. I would suggest you use the noise fill, because it makes things a lot easier. So now I can go around my entire image and do the rest of the cells. And you can see, even when zoomed out, you can clearly see the cells that have been filled with the speckledy color, and you can then count all the cells. So that's a very quick look at how ImageJ can do cross-sectional area and cell number in a histological sample.